I convert it into a business. I could have given it as a charity, free seeds. First thing, free seeds, I will have less capacity to reach more because I will have a limitation of money. And the burden of these seeds will be passed on to the borrowers because this is a bank owned by them. So they may have to pay higher prices for their loans because expenses have gone up. So I didn't do that. I just directly said I sell. Then I can sell to anybody, not just come in bank borrowers. And in the process, that problem was addressed. I created many such businesses after that. Every time I see a problem, I create a business to solve it. It became a habit with me, an exciting habit. Every time I see something and I feel I can do something about it, what will be the business model out of it? And I come up with an idea and try it out, it worked. I was very excited. I have created more than 60 such companies in Bangladesh. Some of them became nationwide companies. Like I created a company for solar energy. Because people in the village have no electricity. When I began, some 19 years back, creating this company, we call it Gramin Shokti, or Gramin Energy, to bring solar home system in the villages of Bangladesh. Everybody say, you're crazy. Solar energy is good for Europe, good for USA, not for Bangladesh. This is too poor a country. Who wants solar energy in this country? I said, that's what you say, but people need light, electricity. They cannot just go on with kerosene lamp as if we are still in the caves. We have not got out of the caves yet. This is 21st century. And you pride about your education and all that, leaving the whole country in darkness. After the sun goes down, it's all dark. Oh, you can make speeches, but it's not going to work. So I created the company. And it started selling solar home systems. People say, ah, no, no, this is some kind of a magic. You can do it for a while, as long as the battery life is there, it will work. So the battery goes, it goes. So why should I pay? So we have to demonstrate, we have to explain, we have to give it an experimental way. You try it and we'll come back. So from five solar home system per month, we went to 20 solar home system per month. 50 solar home system per month. We got very excited. 18 years later, we were selling 1,000 solar home system per day. Right now, we have 1.6 million homes with solar home system in Bangladesh. And every day is adding new growth. We didn't free do free distribution of solar home system. We just made it into a product, the whole system. When I started talking to the scientists who understand solar system, solar home system and all that, every time I meet somebody, he gives me a long lecture, what is the science behind it. I said, I don't know the science. I, all I need to know whether it works, how do you plug it in, how do you get the money. I look at it as a kind of thing, finished product. You know the science, that's for you. I want to see that light comes out. You switch it and it happens. They get very disappointed. They are not interested in the business part at all. And that's what my interest was. So I have to figure out how to do that. And it worked. We became, in the process, <coughs> largest off-grid solar system in the whole world. We had no idea what other people are doing. They come and say, ah, you, you are so the largest. Nobody ever did an off-grid system like this. They're always telling the people, oh, you have to have the rural system. I said, forget about the rural system. I'm dealing with individual person. They are the best decision maker. I don't want to get into complicated thing. And that it worked. It spread. Then people say, why do you create those businesses? I said, because it solves problem. Then you must be making a lot of money. I said, no, I don't make money. How come you have so many businesses, big businesses, you don't have money? I said, because I created this business to solve problem, 
I had no intention of making a penny out of this business. So this is what I do. <laughs> to give them more shock, I said, I have created so many companies, but I don't own a single share in any company anywhere in the world. That's simple. <laughs> then they said, well, this kind of thing will not work for other people. I said, why not? Because you can do it because you are crazy. You don't follow the rules. I said, why should you call me crazy? He said, because you don't want to make money. People want to make money. That's what the common people are. I said, that's what you think. You think people will not do this business because they don't make money? Yes. Money is the only incentive in the world who drives the economy. If you take away profit, it dis dis disappears. There's no incentive to run any business. I said, I'm running this business. If I don't want to make money, is there a law in the country that you have to stop me? You cannot make any money out of this business? It's my decision. Then why do you have this decision? Because you are, you are a strange person. You're very unusual. You don't belong to other people. I said, no. You call me strange, you call me unusual, because I don't want to make money, I invest money, I get my money back, but I create the business just to solve the problem that I address. And I call them a name, because communication is good if you have a name for that, I call them social business. And define as non-dividend company to solve human problems. Unlike the conventional business, which you do for making money for yourself. Profit maximization is the goal of the business. So if you are crazy because you don't want to make profit and you want to invest it and get the money back. I said if there is a competition for a strange people, I won't be the number one. You'll find a lot of people who give away their money. You don't call them a strange people. I'm not giving away. I'm investing and getting things done and get the money back and use it again. Why do you call me strange? If you have to call them strange, you call the strange people who are giving away their money. Every person gives away money. Some small money, some little big, some lots of money. But every person gives away money. So you, it's a part of human being. Then I said, one thing you say about profit, profit maximization, is the goal, is the driving force, is the only thing which drives the economy. I said I agree partially, I agree that in profit is a driving force. But I don't agree that's the only incentive, only driving force. The word only I don't agree. Because I believe there are other driving forces, other excitements in life. I said like what? I said like making money is a happiness, so you run after money, the more money you make, the more happy you get. So making money is a happiness, that's what the incentive is. Making other people happy is a super happiness. <laughs> but you don't believe it because you never tasted it. If you ever tasted it, then you tell me which one tastes better. If I put two things on the table, you take only one thing and say, oh, this is good, and that's other one is not good. You have not even tasted it. How do you know it's not other thing is not good? I said, first you have to taste it. And those who have tasted it, they all say it is a super happiness. Once you have tasted it, you can't get away from it. It's a very intoxicating happiness. You can't get away. That's what it is. So I keep on adding this. Then I see Big companies become interested in our work. We created a lot of these companies. For the shortage of time, I'm not going to the other issue. Big companies became interested. First one was a big multinational company. The chairman of the company, who is also the owner of the company, he was totally taken by the idea that you can do business to solve problems. And I gave all the examples that I gave. He said, I read your book, and really, it made me think. 
why don't we do social business? I said, oh, you're welcome, you can do that. So they said, we want to have a joint venture with you so that you can teach us how to do it. I said, okay, we'll be happy to do that. This was Danone, it's a French company, milk product company. So they get very excited, they came to Bangladesh, they spent lots of time, lots of days arguing with us, designing the product and so on. So for every social business, you have to look at a problem. And once you see the problem, and you design a business to solve that problem. And if you're successful in this solving the problem, it's done, it's a business, your money comes back. So I kept explaining, I said, you could have done that by charity also. You give the money as a charity and solve the problem. It's a very good problem solve. You can use it for problem solving, it's charity money. But the limitation of charity is money goes, does the work, but doesn't come back. Money doesn't come back. So you have only one time use of the money. If you do it in a social business, you design the business, put a business engine behind it, and the money goes out, does the work, and business brings it back, money back. So the same money can be used and used endlessly it becomes very powerful. I said, charity money has one life, but social business money has endless life. And it becomes enormously creative, powerful. They don't like that idea. They created a company with us called Grameen Danone. The problem they chose is the malnutrition among the children. Bangladesh has a massive malnutrition among the children. 48% of the children are malnourished. So everybody's trying to improve the nutrition situation, but it's still it's a massive problem. So we thought, why don't we get in there? What we did, we created a yogurt, a special yogurt, put all the micronutrients which are missing in the children into the yogurt, made it fortified yogurt. Yogurt, vitamin, iron, zinc, iodine, everything. And made it very cheap. Once you have social business, you can make things very cheap. Why? Because if you want to make profit, you have to play with lots of gimmicks. For example, you have little content, you make a big box. Put it there so that people are willing to pay big money. So big box cost you bigger money so that you can get more money out of them. Here in social business, you don't have to do this. You don't have to convince anybody. People will come because you solve the problem. So we cut down lots of costs, so it became very cheap. Then we designed a marketing system because poor people don't come to the grocery shop to do the buy, to buy their stuff. So we created a new marketing system with a poor woman selling this yoga door to door and get a commission out of it. So we have a network of marketing. And then children love this yoga and they're improving their health condition. Every test that we did, every uh, surve uh, survey they have done, come with the same result. Health improvement is absolutely sus systematic and uh, sustainable. So that's one, and companies growing because children love it. Even now the rich people, they buy their yogurt because it's good for them, good for their children. It's good taste, and it's a Danone yogurt. It's a prestige value. Why should the poor women have their children have Danone yogurt? We should have it too. So we did one thing. For big stores, we have a different color of thing, different container, and have a very high price. <laughs> they love it. When you sell it cheap, people become suspicious. It's not good. When you make it expensive, rich people love it. Because you are the only one who can afford it. Let's have it. So now we sell them. We make money out of this. And we cross-subsidize for the poor people. So for poor people, it is less than cost of production. For rich people, it's much higher than cost of production. We make profit. So it goes. So this is one example of social business. We created a lot of others. And in the meantime, something happened which took me to another direction. I go back to the Grameen Bank and their families. All these women who joined Grameen Bank, 
they are illiterate women. Never went to school. Cannot read, cannot write. Their husbands never went to school. Never read, never write. And at the very early days of coming back, we made a decision. We'll make sure their children do not repeat the same fate as their parents. 100% of the children of Grameen families must go to school, must finish school. And we did that. And when we were small, it was easy to persuade everybody. And after that, it became a habit. We don't even have to tell them because it became a new culture for them. If you join Grameen Bank, you have to send your children to school. Otherwise, they will not give you money. So we took advantage. We didn't tell anybody anything. Simply, they thought this is the way to go. It. So we have 100% of the children, all these eight and a half million families that we talk about, are children in school. Then they come to a level when they want to go to college. But college is an expensive place. They cannot afford it. We tell the young people, don't worry about money. That's not your problem. That's our problem, bank's problem. We'll give you a loan, student loan. Go as far as you can come. Money will not be a limitation for you. So they were delighted. As a result, we have a completely new generation of young people with highly educated professional people coming out of totally illiterate families. Some became doctors, many are engineers, many are professors in universities, and so on. But in the middle of it, a problem kept coming up. Young people who are graduating, looking for jobs, there's no job. Bangladesh doesn't have many jobs. We have lots of people, but no job opportunities. So they come and complain to me. Why did you send us to school? There is no job for us. See, in the beginning, I couldn't say what, what, good, what kind of message I gave them. But after a while, I started saying something they didn't like in the beginning. Now they like it. I keep asking, who told you to have a job? Did your teacher tell you how to have a job? Or you read it in your textbook that you have to have a job? They get very puzzled. Because you don't have to quote anybody that somebody told me to have a job. They thought that's what the whole purpose of education, you have to have a job. Then I tell them, forget about the whole job idea. That's an obsolete idea. Coming from the old century, you are young people of the new century. Why are you going back to this old idea? Of, this is an idea which is, is, has a no meaning whatsoever. It doesn't make any sense to them when I say that. And I tell them, you start thinking in a different way. If you think in an old way, you are finished. You have to think in a different way. And the different ways you repeat to yourself, every day you wake up in the morning, first thing you do, you repeat this, I'm not a job seeker, I'm a job creator. And behave like a job creator. <laughs> Think like a job creator. And then you'll find your way. Running after job is not your business. That's too small, too de demeaning for you. Why should you work under somebody? Still, it didn't make any sense. Then I started campaigning to them. I said, here is the money. We created a social business fund. All you have to do, come up with a business idea. Any business. You come and tell us that it makes sense. And we see that, yes, it, this business makes sense. And we put all the money you need as our investment. And we become your partner. This is not a loan. This is an investment. We come as your partner. So we take the risk according to our share of our business, your business. So that we don't have to worry, am I going to successful? What happens if I fail? Nothing to worry. It's our money. We work together. We are a partner. Now, young people are coming in thousands, in hundreds and thousands, keep coming, and we keep selecting and investing in a new series of people coming. It's amazingly endless ideas. They come from remote villages. We don't work in the cities, I told you. So they come from the remote villages. The young girl of 19 year old presenting their bus her business proposition. 
I make beautiful dress, people love it, I sell the dresses, then what do you want? I don't have a business because I don't have a shop. I, don't, I have one old machine I took from my mother. It works, but not as good. So I need two new machines. You give me two new machines, money to buy, and I'll set it up. I've trained two young girls like me to do it. I can train them, and I'll set up my shop. And I'll do because I know how to make clothes. So we interrogate her, how, what's her calculation, how, many, how much she can produce, how long it does take. So she answers every single question because that's what she does. It's not, she's not learning from books, she does it from her life. And we give her the money, how much money you need? You need 10,000 rupees, you need 15,000 rupees, or whatever. Here is the money, go ahead. So this is how it works. So we get to 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 taka investments. And they take and they start investing. So they become entrepreneurs. We have very elaborate system. I mean, keeping track with each other, how to do that. Then I said, why people are unemployed? What I'm telling these young people, I now tell to everybody. Why are you looking for jobs? Job has no meaning to anybody's life. I said, human beings are not born to work somebody else, work for somebody else. Human beings are born as an entrepreneur. That's our history. We are go-getters. Human beings.